what we try to do that I think is so radical is invite, in a way, every modern 18-year-old to say, I want to understand where my world came from, not just in a historical sense, but in the sense of what were the arguments that led us to the assumptions, the apparatus, the structure of life that we live in today. When the Pythagorean theorem is presented to us, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, most of us, it's quite natural, we learn it and we use it. Then some of us ask, why? Turns out, when you ask why, there's a really interesting inquiry you can go on that leads to Euclid's Elements, Book 1, up to Proposition 47. It's a beautiful moment in the history of science, in the history of philosophy, in the history of human discovery. And it's the, the way in which the why question and wanting to get to the bottom of things drives you forward. We are going to try to, in a certain sense, study the whole of things insofar as it pertains to uh, a human being, our cares, our questions, our deepest concerns. We're going to look at uh, philosophy, literature, history, economics, mathematics, natural science, music, all the domains that you might think of as the traditional liberal arts and the sciences. Uh, I think we would think of them as you know, the primordial uh, uh, ways in which humans try to make sense of the world and make sense of their own place in it. And we do that through contact with reading, discussing primary texts, uh, the so-called great books of the Western tradition in our undergraduate program. And we do that in a broadly chronological way, starting with texts like Homer's Iliad, Plato's Republic, Euclid's Elements, the locus classicus of Western mathematics, really, but geometry in particular. Uh, and we work our way up to the 20th century, the l recognized great works of literature and philosophy, uh, like uh, Joyce's The Dead, uh, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, uh, essays by Heidegger or Husserl, great philosophers of the 20th century. So there's a kind of chronological progression uh, through uh, the great works of the Western tradition, and there's an attempt to relate, uh, I think in a deep way, all domains of human knowledge, human inquiry, at the level of their first principles and their foundational arguments. We don't have electives or majors in the traditional sense. We look for the interconnections and interrelations in everything we study. We do not compartmentalize uh, human knowledge, human inquiry, we, we view it as uh, uh, an interrelated whole, uh, and that's what we're trying to, uh, 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 to map and explore through the program. We do that in a small, student-driven, conversation-driven classroom with faculty who also work across all these disciplines, who are there as fellow learners and experienced guides, but not as professors. We call ourselves tutors, not professors, because we view ourselves as leading an inquiry, a shared inquiry, rather than imparting expertise or knowledge, even though many of us are accomplished academics in one discipline or another. That most of what we're taught, we're taught in packaged ways. It's, it's a body of work that's being handed over to us, and it sort of hides its origins. It hides its development. It hides its primary rationale. It hides its assumed premises. At St. John's, we try to open things up to get to ground in that way, to find out what the first principles, what the assumptions are, what the argument that leads up to that is. We're not studying the Western tradition. We're studying the roots of our modern world. Uh, we're moderns. We're living in the 21st century, whether we're in America or China. Uh, and that world is largely defined by the same forces, the same influences that have come through uh, this tradition. And for those students too, it's a journey of self-discovery uh, and of getting to the roots of the forces, economic, political, scientific, technological, that are defining their world as they are defining our world. So there's an incredible blend of diversity and shared enterprise uh, of self-knowledge and exploration that we now see spans the globe. It's not a distinctively Western 
or American, much less uh, for some particular class or people with particular political dispositions. It's for everybody.